Okay, so Arena, let's talk about classes. So as in monster classes and the reason why you may be losing a lot in Arena or are your units are not performing as you would like them to. So in all other content apart from Arena, our classes are not that important because you actually have this targeting button, meaning that whichever target your summoner hits, all of your monsters will focus and this pretty much applies in dungeons, uh, various other map areas, battlefield, stuff like that. So classes aren't too important there, it's like good to know them, but uh, the gameplay does not change much based on the class. However, for Arena and Brawl Arena, uh, classes are pretty much the main thing that run the game, and the reason for that is in an Arena match you actually do not have the option to target the same target as your summoner. This means that all of your units will have a mind of their own, and uh, you have to sort of predict on how uh, the monster will perform and it's way easier to uh, predict the outcome by knowing classes rather than just going blindly into the fight. So to access classes you can go to your monster menu and click on any unit and click on this little class icon in here. And in here you can see six different classes that currently exist in the game. So those are Knight, Warrior, Support, Mage, Archer and Assassin. And each of them have a different description of how they work. So there is a lot of text, but what you need to know is only to pay attention to the last line in each class description. So uh, these are like the general overview of what the class is. However, the targeting is always written in the last line. And in here you can see that, for example, for a knight, so all knight type summoners, like the galleon for example, uh, they will act in uh, the written way and that is charges to the nearest enemy. This means that whatever knight unit you are using, that knight will always attack the closest enemy to him. So that way, when you're planning a fight, for example, if you see a knight on the enemy team, you already know that that knight will charge the closest unit in your front line and if you put a unit in the front line that can counter that knight in the enemy's team you will have a very easy way of dealing with it so the same goes for other classes so a warrior will attack assassins and melee enemies first so melee enemies are the ones that attack from close range and most of the melee enemies are knight types, assassin types and are a big majority of warrior types. Like warrior is sort of a unique element that it has both ranged and melee champions. For all others, uh, assassins are all melee, knights are all melee and support mages and archers are all ranged champions. So for the warrior, he will basically attack either a knight, an assassin, or in some cases a warrior if he is a melee one. For supports, uh, what you need to know is that they will move towards uh, the closest ally that is uh, on low HP. So for example, if you bring a tank uh, who is constantly getting hit, your support will pretty much always follow them uh, in order to dash out their abilities. Uh, for mages and archers, they're sort of similar, it's just that mages usually utilize their spells, whereas archers are more based on basic attacks uh, and they sort of attack in a similar way. So for mages, uh, they move to safer locations and cast spells when an enemy approaches uh, or upon taking damage. And for archers, uh, they also attack the closest enemy first and maintains distance from the enemy with depth movement. So now that you know how the classes work, you can sort of work on manipulating uh, the fights in Arena. So I'm, I'm gonna try to find a target that is a bit easier as I do want to be explaining in the middle of the fight, not just go and say 1v1 and just complete the fight in 10 seconds. So for example this guy. Uh, in this one, uh, let's remove all the units for now. You can see that he has a wind cleave, who is a warrior type actually. Uh, is it written here somewhere? I forgot. No wait, is cleave warrior or is he a knight type? He's one of those, but basically uh, what you need to know about cleave is that he's a melee champion. So yeah, 
Uh, this means that Cleef is a melee one and he also has Bastet support as well as Argen and Thessalian as archers. So with that team you're already seeing that Cleef is the only frontline unit. That means uh, you want your archers and mages to more focus on killing Cleef efficiently and fortunately for me uh, the Siren is a very good option at countering Cleef as he can defend break, he can oblivion the Cleef and easily kill him. So he, the Cleef is also wind element so he will counter him pretty easily. After that you can see that he has a support as well as two archers so what I'm gonna do while my team is fighting the Cleave is to try to manipulate one of the archers into bringing them to the rest of the team. So yeah, uh, pretty much the fight itself is pretty self-explanatory. My goal is to bait out one of the archers towards the team so that they could be the next focus right after Cleave is dead. And uh, for my team, uh, their goal is to kill Cleave first of all, and later on to focus on the target that I have baited uh, closer to them. So, the Siren is pretty much the only unit I really need in this team, the rest are just to buff up my team. So in that case, I'll be of course picking Galleons, and he is super OP in Arena due to that low mana cost uh, buff. And uh, I decided to bring the Bastard as the Siren will pretty much counter both Cleave as well as both of these archers as they are wind and fire elements so fire nukers are the best into this sort of team. I could also bring a Chivo however I know that I will be getting hit by the Siren a lot and I do want that shield for the extra tankiness. So uh, we can go with that in mind and try to win the fight this way. And as you can see, uh, my team has dealt with Cleave pretty easily. In the meantime, I have brought Argen. I went behind Argen and since he is an archer type, I started attacking him from the back, which causes his class to back off and since he's backing off away from me he will back into the middle which means that my team is able to focus on him more easily first of all that splits up uh, the team that he has and second of all that brings him closer uh, to the middle and that means that the rest of my team will be able to focus on him more easily as as you know Galleon will always focus on the nearest attacker Archers will usually focus on the closest attacker after they're done with there as well. So this is just sort of a way on how you can manipulate uh, your arena teams and trust me classes are even more important than the final teams that you have built. Like uh, units are super good but they will only get you so far and you are able to beat way harder opponents by just knowing what their units will do. So let's try to find another opponent where I could showcase classes quite well. Okay, I think this guy could be a very good showcase. So he has three different classes. Uh, he has a Cleave who will be a frontline unit. He has Chasun who is a support, so she will stay in the back until someone receives quite a bit of damage. On top of that, he also has a Tessanian who is an archer and will also stay in the back. And uh, this is, yeah, the transmog is always dodgy, but this is kind of dead. So he is the free assassin that you get uh, from the monster study. And assassins type, remember that they will focus on your archers or mages if you have any. So when there is an assassin, what I like to do is either bring a warrior unit as they will focus on assassins primarily. Another option I really like into assassins is to actually not bring any ranged units like archers or mages at all and just go full melee or support. That way assassins are kind of lost, their value is uh, lost quite significantly and this allows you to win the battle a bit easier. But this time I'll try to bring the range targets. So in this I'm looking that since both of the damage dealers are water, I will probably be bringing a water archer. So I'll run up my Espino real quick. 
I will be bringing Galleon since both of the damage dealers are water element and the Siren will most likely focus on my frontline and as Galleon is my frontline unit he will be taking hits uh, from the Tessarian and most likely from the Cleave. So the fire units will not do too much to Galleon. The Oblivion will also not be too impactful as a, the Galleon doesn't have any passive. So it won't matter too much. And honestly, just to showcase it, I might as well just bring the Bulldozer. He has pretty crappy runes, I never bothered upgrading it uh, once the 6 star ones came out. So we'll just bring how he is and we'll see what happens. I'll also bring uh, the water element as both the damage dealers are fire and it will simply allow me to deal easier uh, with the threats. So the plan is to focus on the Karambit first of all. So my bulldozer will be hitting Karambit hopefully as long as everything works out. I will be focusing on Karambit as well and Spino hopefully focuses on Karambit too. After that, uh, once the Karambit is taking damage, uh, the goal is for the Chesun to come closer to Karambit to heal him. And once she comes closer, after Karambit is dead, hopefully we are able to focus on Chesun. Now the problem with that is Cleef is also a melee champion and he has a light element. And light is super unpredictable and it will always uh, have some weird uh, target options. So yeah, you can see we dealt with Karambit pretty easily. Unfortunately, Chasun didn't even have a chance uh, to come help out as I killed him super easily. And now I'll go behind the Sardian. That way, the Sardian is brought towards my team. Uh, I know that my team can easily deal with the uh, Cleave. And yeah, pretty much this was... Of course, I'm, bringing, I'm going into a bit of weaker enemy, but I'm a bit distracted. So I'm trying to explain it at the same time as well. So yeah. This is sort of how you manipulate uh, the AI, uh, that way if you understand how each class interacts with each other, you are able to easily predict the outcome of the team, predict what team you need in order to beat it and are successfully in the fight. And this applies to both Challenge Arena and Brawl Arena because both arenas do not have the targeting option. In Brawl, if it's close, harder since uh, the enemy summoner has manual control and he can actually counter you the same way you are counting his team. But uh, at least for Challenge Arena, this is a sure way to get a lot of wins. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Uh, the One Punch Man collab is dropping soon. And if the skills come out on different servers at a different time, I'll make sure to cover them tomorrow as soon as they come out. And yeah, see you in the next one.